Hello, church family. Fantastic to join you again. And I've got the fantastic Laura Fisher, who's my really good friend with us. Give us a wave, Laura. <laughs> there she is. Uh, so um, we're just going to chat a bit about Laura's life. Um, and, and one of the things I love about anybody who does anything for Jesus, um, I've never met anyone who is doing it and everything's fine, that everything's perfect. And so we just want to sort of tease a bit out of Laura's story. It's hearing some fantastic things that God's done in and through her and her passion for people and for Jesus. But just also that then it's not like everyone's been perfect or fine, you know, and, and that's really important underlying for people because I think we get this sort of rainbow marshmallows idea of Christianity, um, which is, isn't real, but actually is something far better. Uh, so, Laura, tell us a little bit about you and your family, and we'll just try and do a little bit of overview of the last few years, shall we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's so, going on? Yeah, so I'm married to Paul uh, and we've got two beautiful children. We've got Abigail, who's 13, and Josh, who's 11. Um, Paul is a police officer for Wiltshire Constabulary um, and I am currently uh, just feeling called to be a missionary in Highworth. So uh, that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, obviously, uh, like uh, most children in the UK at the moment, the children are at home. Uh, not at school um, but we are actually I'm really I'm really loving the the increased family time um, yeah. I find I find the, the the western speed of which we live I can find that quite exhausting and kind of going from one thing to another to another um, and you know I've just really loved just being able to to stop having to rush around everywhere and enjoy time loving each other talking to each other listening to each other you know not thinking about the next commitment um and just having some time with god together as well <laughs> yeah. so, uh, yeah. Paul's obviously still working full time so uh we we kind of include him when he's here <laughs> yeah and so and, and for you guys if i look at like your journey um i mean in a sense you were quite normal do you know what I mean John, John uh, Paul had a really good job and career you've been doing some different jobs and stuff um you had a house do you know what I mean you'd done it up a bit uh, and then suddenly you sold it and mm. pulled down his job for a season what was all that about and where did you go okay so back in uh, I think it was 2012 um when um you guys had come back from uh, Mozambique. I know that you had built up a relationship uh, with Amy and David Lancaster, who are uh, missionaries in Jackson, Mississippi. And um, Catherine had kind of kept in touch with Amy and she was doing kind of work in the kind of ghetto area in Jackson and um, also was kind of willing to just love, love people for Jesus, wherever mm -hmm. that and whatever that looked like um, and a, an opportunity came up for uh, her to take a team of people out to Matamoras in Mexico uh, and Catherine uh, kind of brought that to the church and just said you know does anyone want to come with me to go on this missionary trip to Mexico and just just go and see what God's doing uh, and I remember just thinking at the time as when she she mentioned it I was just like yes yes I do no you know no no particular big flash or no audible word mm -hmm. but just yes I want to go and I I was drawn to the fact that we were you know told we were going to a, an orphanage in Mexico and uh, that there would be children to love I particularly love children I I just love I love um just pour, pouring into them uh, a sense of yeah loves to, to see their self-esteem blossom and grow mm -hmm. and I always have as a mum uh, I used to work at a preschool and I love kind of being able to do that in a, in a setting so um, those are the things that I kind of went going but actually God did a lot more in me uh, than 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 anything else and and I, I realized looking back now that that was the start of me wanting to put Jesus front and center in my life. Mm -hmm. I've grown up in the Catholic church, uh, which gave me a brilliant uh, kind of start to understanding and believing in a God. Um, but then when I um, really 
realized that Jesus was my Lord and Savior as a 14 year old teenager, um, it started to grow. It was more than going to church on a Sunday. It was more than, um, yeah, the, the experiences I'd had, I guess. And, mm -hmm. and so then, yeah, fast forward to, to this, this, this trip. And I just thought, I, I, I want to, um, yeah, love, love people for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I guess then I started on this journey of praying and um, praying that not only would that be a, a thing for me, but that uh, it would become a, a thing for our family, you know, knowing that, that as we do that, we will become fully who we are created to be. Um, so, yeah, we... Um, Um, Paul then um, went on a, uh, a kind of recce trip to Moldova uh, the year afterwards I would say with with uh, with you to yeah. uh, kind of go and see what God was doing in another nation in a nation that is is in Europe and yet you know incredibly poor one of the yeah just so much poverty in in so many areas of Moldova and yeah it's in Eastern Europe so you guys headed off to just see what God was doing through some uh, people that we were we'd heard of who were working out there yeah. uh, and as I the more I prayed about Moldova the more I um thought about the the people and the poverty out there the more i found my heart kind of aching to want to go and do something about it for those yeah. in the villages for the poor there just to know that there was more to um to to life than the poverty that they knew that despite being poor that they could know peace that they could know joy that they could know um that they're loved and they're seen and they're not, they're not forgotten in, in the places that they live. Um, so, um, we ended up, yeah, you, uh, the next year, um, Paul and I just kind of happened to think, okay, well, we'll go to Moldova as a couple. Paul went with, yeah. with we met that the year before and, and now, uh, we'll go as a couple. And again, uh, just, nothing in particular but just a sense of being drawn there um mm -hmm. work that was going on um yeah um and then uh the year after that we uh went as a family um and i um yeah, I remember going as a family and just thinking all of this is, it's not necessarily about the nation itself, but about us growing individually in our relationships with Jesus. So Paul, myself and Abby and Josh, um, but, but longing for, for that as a, as a family as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah all the while um yeah we had uh, a house uh, that we owned in well that we, we owned with the, we owned with the bank in uh, yeah. highworth uh, and paul uh, continued to be a police officer and i uh, at the time about this time was then working for the church um and we felt like god was calling us to step out of the life that we were doing to give mm -hmm. him room um yeah and i remember i can't remember exactly who it was uh, speaking but i remember paul felt quite Im impacted a few months before we kind of made all the decision um about um laying down our crowns and um well that was quite cool wasn't it sorry jump in it was a word from Alison Goddard that said, lay your crowns before me. It was to us as a church. And for 
Paul, literally, he was on, I think, at that point, the fast track where, as a police officer, he would have got crowns on his uh, lapels. So whilst for all of us, it was sort of the sense of, you know, laying our, you know, our, our worth and our gifts and, and whatever before God, for Paul, it was really specific, wasn't it? So, which was cool. It was, it was. And he felt, yeah, very much that, that day, you know, God's, God's saying to, to put down this kind of, because at the time, yeah, he was kind of going on this career journey to, to, to stop that, to pause at least. Uh, yeah. So then, yeah, that, that uh, fast forward a few months and we felt that it was right to sell our home uh, to fund the trip because it was obviously going to cost mm-hmm. money for four flights to get to Hawaii and pay for the accommodation for three months and then go on her outreach to, to countries we didn't know where we were going to go. So uh, we felt that was the right thing to do. And, and that was, that was um, a, a big step. I, I know for other people around us, um, you know, friends and family on the outside, like, whoa, that was a big step. But it, it just felt like a natural, that was the next step for us to do. It just felt like the right thing to do. So, yeah. So you were you were going with YWAM, weren't you? Which yeah. uh, massive uh, missions organisation? We joked earlier that because uh, it's youth with a mission, so you did the Crossroads DTS, which is a bit like Coronation Street uh, <laughs> for missionaries. Um, so yeah, so you're out in uh, Hawaii for three months, like you said, and that was like more teaching, training, worship, prayer focus, wasn't it? Before you went out on mission. Yeah. So just quickly, do you know what what was a, like a highlight, or what was what, what did you really yeah. Be blessed in that time. I mean, it was beautiful to, I mean, aside from anything else, it's a beautiful part of the world. We were in Kona, it's a lovely island. I love, um, you know, the beauty of creation. I'm always drawn closer to Jesus when I uh, see a sunset or a sunrise or, uh, you know, beautiful um, mountains. I'm looking out of my bedroom window at the moment, I can see over to Hannington, and it's just, I love watching the birds flying on the thermals of the air. I'm reminded of mm. God. Um, and so, so that just aside, just seeing the, the beautiful sunsets uh, was stunning. Um, being able to be family. So again, just to, for, for, the, for everything else to stop normal mm-hmm. life, like yeah. stop and to, to be family, to be um, surrounded by people who were also uh, chasing after Jesus, you know, seeking. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and therefore, because I love worship, I love to worship, I love that that draws me closer to Jesus's heart. Um, and they've got like a, an open air um, kind of sports court, if you like, that's got mm-hmm. a end where uh, once a week we would do kind of um, campus wide worship. And that was fantastic. I loved the freedom of, of just being able to, to worship their and and be doing it outside with with hundreds of other people <laughs> um, fantastic yeah. yeah and of course you went straight for from there to india so that's a little bit different just yeah. quickly what was uh you worked with some children there didn't you so what was what was that like yeah, yeah. one of the the things we did um we because we we got to india in their summertime and so they were running kind of vacation bible schools um and so um yeah as a family we were able to join a team to 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 take jesus into the into one of the one of the slums and just uh, again just just bring joy and hopefully some of the love of jesus to those um to those people that were yeah and I know there's like so much more we could talk about because um, you guys went on from there and we're out in Moldova um, uh, long term in sense for for a, just over a year. Still got heart for Moldova. Um, like now you're based here and feeling very much called to be a missionary here. And yet, you know, when 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 the doors open again, all the flights are available. We'll, we'll be out, out to Moldova and other places. You know, and you, you've led worship, you lead worship at the moment, you've been on leadership team. Um, but just quickly, so the backdrop to that hasn't been the, you know, it's all been uh, rainbows and marshmallows. Um, it, it's, so, it's, so just quickly mention a little bit about like sort of mental health stuff through that time. Um, yeah, just what you struggle with. Um, and yeah, go on. 
Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's fair to say over the years, I have uh, certainly struggled with periods of time where I have, you know, felt um, just right low self esteem, um, doubting myself, doubting my mm-hmm. capabilities. Um, yeah, um, getting to the place where. Um, you know, you don't believe that you are worth very much, that you you can't bring anything. Um, and and you kind of almost start listening to the negative thoughts in here, mm-hmm. uh, which can be a really isolating and lonely place to be because sometimes yeah. you feel that people don't understand, um, you know, that people... Um, um, yeah, maybe people who haven't walked through um, similar things don't get it. or and, and that can almost make you feel worse sometimes, you know, that you're um, kind of uniquely struggling in it. Mm-hmm. When the truth is that, that, you know, we all struggle from time to time with, with different um, thoughts, you know, um, and negative thoughts about ourselves. Um yeah, and I think, Jimmy, like in terms of through that, you know, um, what are some of the steps you've had to take? Do you mean because I've like, been involved doctors and things, or mm, has it yeah. been like I'm just going to pray? Yes, yeah. So that I mean, there's been times when I have uh, just prayed and sought. Um, no, I don't want that to be. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, and and. Um, and I think it's just, you know, and I know it's not an easy thing for any of us to talk about. I think it's one of those sort of taboo subjects for Christians. I mean, it's all right if you break your leg and you get a plaster on it. Um, and everyone goes, oh, well done for going to hospital. When we come to, you know, our, our emotional, spiritual, mental health, in a sense, it can be very condemning, can't it? We can feel like we're failing and we're missing the mark. Uh, and we, and I mean, and part of what we just wanted to do today was say to everyone, it's okay yeah you're not disqualified if you're struggling with mental health in fact i think we want to really underline as hcc that everybody's got a mental health issue none of us are totally redeemed and set free and perfect in christ yet and that's not to be con- you know to put everyone down but actually to go we're all in this boat a different measure and different level but what i love with your story laura is because i've you know we we know you pretty well Catherine and I, and and there's been some really, really tough stuff, but you've kept saying yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and even when, I mean, those lies are going away, you've chosen not to um, give in to those things and, and believe that. And I love a picture, God called on me now, and my favourite writer, he said, he talked about wounded healers. Mm-hmm. And and on this planet, guys, yeah, God God will walk with you. He will always be there for you. Sometimes we'll get healed, sometimes we'll get set free, but the issue is that actually he's there and we walk with him and wherever we're at today, he can still use us. And actually sometimes our weakness actually is the best thing to enable him to do that. Mm. So thank you, Laura. Yeah, okay. You're right. We got there. We had a bit of a struggle getting this one together, didn't we? We had technical issues and other stuff, but we've made it. So Laura, is it right if you just quickly really just pray for anybody specifically who's watching this right now and that that sort of mental health stuff has been a real struggle and we just want them to know peace today. Is that all right? Absolutely, yes, of course. Father God, I want to thank you that you are a good, good father, that your, um, your plans and your purposes for us are good. Jesus. But Lord, I just want to pray for anyone this morning who just uh, watching this is feeling uh, condemned, um, just feeling um, like they're not able to cope, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you are our strength. I thank you that you are our protection, Lord Jesus. I pray just for that sense of peace to pervade. Lord, in our minds, and that, Lord, that no matter what is going on around us, 
that we would be able to focus on you, Jesus, focus on your love, focus on your peace, focus on your grace, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Laura. Bless you today and bless all you guys watching this. And we'll see you soon. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>